So today we're doing some planting and planting is my favorite job in the garden. So I get excited about that to begin with. But today we're planting three very cool plants. And this is gonna be a little bit different than most planting videos you see because my guess is that at least one of these you've never seen planted because at least one of these I just learned about about six months ago. And if somebody's already been planting this on YouTube, why didn't you tell me about it? So the first plant we are planting today is one called Caillou. It is a group three pruner, which means you prune it all the way back to basically one set of buds uh, in early spring or spring. I don't know, early spring, late spring, it all seems like spring and then suddenly it's summer. So I don't know what early spring is compared to late spring. Um, anyway, you prune it all the way back. This is the type of clematis that I am growing more and more because they're just so easy. They perform really well. You don't get the huge flowers that you might on a group two. I don't need that. I'll take a mass of little flowers any day. And that's what this one has. This one has white kind of blushed with pink little nodding bell flowers. To me, they kind of look like Lily of the Valley flowers, but bigger. Now I have a whole video on clematis because clematis were my first plant love. They are the, the plant that I went head over heels for and planted way too many of. Uh, before I ever discovered what a dahlia was. So um, I'm really into clematis and I buy them without any idea where they're gonna go, which is what happened when this one showed up. Now, I bought this from Brushwood, which is where I pretty much get all my clematis from these days. And they send them um, out of the package. And this one is actually starting to lose its soil just a touch. But um, they have cut, well, well, I'll show you this once I pull it out of the bag. But uh, what you're looking for, these are gallon sized plants. And what you're looking for when you buy a clematis is roots. So clematis are all about roots. So if you buy a clematis from a nursery and you pull it out of the pot and you don't see whole bunches of yellow roots everywhere on it, um, I would highly suggest that you cut those vines back to about four inches, which is this one has been, it's kind of nice. They do this for shipping, but it does the hard work for you. There's only about two inches of foliage left here, um, which is exactly what you do because you want that plant to create roots. Where to plant a clematis is always an issue because I have shoehorned them in all over this garden. But my favorite place to plant clematis is not up a trellis, it is up trees and shrubs because they just ramble around, they do their thing. And I think there is nothing more interesting than when you look at a plant, at a tree or a shrub, and you think, well, those flowers aren't supposed to be there because they actually sort of, the clematis makes it way, its way down the branches and you have flowers of a different color. So for instance, up my service berry, I have a clematis called Grave Tie Beauty growing up there. And so, and that's a really late bloomer. And so really late in the season, all of a sudden there's these beautiful red flowers in a, in my service berry, just on the lower branches. It doesn't get up hot, very high, but uh, it's a fun look. So I have these growing up. I mean, almost every shrub in this part of the garden has at least one clematis growing up, it, except for the one that I'm about to plant a clematis on. So we're on the back side of the patio garden and here is a little viburnum I have, I think it's called Shoshani and it's a placatum type and it's lovely and I hope it stays healthy and it's absolutely covered in flower buds right now. Um, but this is about as tall as it gets and I like it, it's a backdrop to the big urn. So when we're sitting on the patio, this is what you see behind the urn. Uh, actually, next to it I have a purple smoke bush and I have a clematis called Princess Diana growing up that one and I actually have another Princess Diana growing up the front of the urn just to a post. Uh, so we are going to plant this clematis basically towards the base of this, out from it a little bit, and we're going to let this clematis work its way through this viburnum here. Now this would not have been possible were it not for the tree project happening because this spot was really quite shady. This was one of the areas that we were trying to address when we wanted to take down the trees um, between us and our neighbors and then replant with shorter trees. So now we're gonna have sun here, so this is no problem for this clematis. So I'm gonna plant this. I mean, we're actually four feet away from the trunk of this, but the branches stick out way over here and we're gonna go here and it'll start its way here. Rather than, I wouldn't wanna tuck it up right next to the, right next to the um, trunk of the shrub, base of the shrub. All right, remember we are thinking about roots here. So, hello, ladies mantle. Um, so, we want to dig a nice wide hole. Um, if you were planting a group two clematis, you'd want to go quite deep too. You can bury those, I would say three inches maybe. 
Um, you don't really have to do that with, and it's not recommended with the other types of clematis, although I don't feel like it hurts. Anyway, we're thinking wide hole, loosen that soil nicely for it. Pick out a wild violet. Now, generally speaking, I follow the basic advice on planting most things, which is that you really shouldn't be adding anything to the hole. But there are some plants that need a little bit of something else, in particular in my, if you've got soil on either end of the spectrum. So if you've got like heavy clay soil or you've got pretty sandy soil like I have, you're going to need to do some amending in that hole. And I think it's fine with the clematis because that root ball is going to get whatever, I don't know what, max of 18 inches wide. It's never going to go outside that. It's not like it's a tree. So I am going to be mixing some things into the hole. What I have in here is some Organics Mechanics uh, compost blend. I'm going to add a little bit of, they come out with worm castings now, so I'm going to add some worm castings in there. And then I'm also going to add biochar, uh, and this is the Organics Mechanics biochar too, but um, I've been using this stuff for a lot of years, so basically since they came out with it. So I really feel like biochar makes a big difference, in particular here um, for its sort of uh, um, a, like moisture holding capacities. I think it helps in my sandy soil quite a bit, and uh, you only have to add it once and it's there. So I'm going to mix this all in with this, and I'm actually going to put some of this, sort of mix this up with the the soil that's in the hole and the stuff that we took out. So I talk a lot about uh, planting clematis in that clematis video so, and pruning, all the things. Um, so you can check that out. But you've probably heard the adage about clematis, uh, head in the sun, feet in the shade. And allow me to just burst your bubble for a second here and tell you that that's a nice way to remember it. And that will certainly get you to the right place. But it's not that clematis roots need shading, it's that clematis roots need consistent moisture. And of course, the way you do that is to not let them dry out by the sun cooking there. So that's what that's all about. So while these roots will absolutely be exposed to sun, um, we are adding a lot of goodness to this hole so that it will stay consistently moist and then we're gonna mulch. So we've added that in there, let's pull this guy out. Like I said, there is, the root ball is starting to sort of fall apart on it a little bit here, which is not a problem. It's not like it's a tree where that can't happen. Okay, so you can see these, all these beautiful yellow roots. That's what you wanna see on your clematis. Clematis have these gorgeous yellow roots. It's fabulous. Actually, I'm gonna go just a touch deeper here. Here we go. And then I'm actually gonna backfill with a fair amount of this too. Now I have not mixed any fertilizer in here with this, but clematis do like fertilizer. I will come and, and fertilize this in a couple of weeks, a few weeks maybe, um, with some rose tone is what I use for my clematis. But um, I'm not gonna add that in at this point because we're not trying to get this thing to produce flowers. We must, we must sacrifice that. Okay, hose comes next. Please don't skip this step when you are planting your clematis actually when you're planting anything, but in particular your clematis, even if it's gonna rain or pour, don't skip this part because this is, letting these roots dry out with the clematis from the get-go is just doom. Now mulch, so I tend to be very lazy about mulching. I hate mulching. I prefer to use plants as mulch, but um, it's a really good idea to mulch most of your plants when you plant them, uh, and in particular something like this, and so, this is a pine bark fine mulch, which um, this is great stuff. Um, I could also use my, um, my arborist wood chips that I have, um, but I'm gonna use this. Um, this is what I sort of use for the beds around the patio because I think it looks really nice. Um, I also use this as a soil amendment. So if I'm making like a, you know, if I'm planting up a pot and I need really good drainage, this stuff is fabulous to mix in with your potting soil to make a really nice draining, well draining mix.
Okay, that's the clematis done. Let's move on to our next cool plant. All right, this plant is a native, and this is Liatris punctuata. Punk, I think it's punctuata. Punctata? Punctarda? It shall go on the screen. In any case, the wonderful Sunflower Steve sent me this. Now, you guys know Sunflower Steve is a guy who breeds sunflowers, but he is also very well versed on native plants, and he's got quite a collection of them. And uh, this is what he sent me, this bare root. So this is what it looks like. Now, there are a whole bunch of different kinds of Liatris, and I have one of them, and I would have to look up which one it is that I have everywhere. It's sort of the more common one. This one's a little bit special. I'm tr I, from what I can gather, it's got a little bit of a fuzzier, sort of a fuzzier flower on it. I think it'd be really interesting to, um, to give this one a shot. Okay, so I am planting this over in the entry garden and I'm just gonna put it right off the path here. The rest of this garden is a big old mess. Uh, it was not well attended to last year and in one year, things went really awry over here. So I have a lot of work to do in this garden to get this back into shape. But this plant will go in and uh, it'll be a great addition to the garden over here. Especially if I can find my glove. Where is my glove? Did I lose? I didn't bring my glove. Okay, we're one glove in it, I guess. So I told you this garden was a mess, but this is gonna be a little good spot for it. So we have over here, we've got some lilac squirrel staying with sorba. I've got some, I think this is, which one is this? Serendipity alliums over here. We've got um, a lot of weeds um, and we've got some other cool things happening here. Um, so I think we're gonna stick it right. Oh, and um, the other thing that's in here is Zizia, which is right behind me, which is starting to seed around a little bit. And that's fine. I'd be happy with that. But I'm going to pop this guy in right here. And I lost a glove somewhere along the line. So this couldn't be easier to plant. I mean, bare root is just really where it's at. Um, okay. So there we go. That's it. Water for that is important. And we'll do that. But that's the next one. And it's right here. Um, and actually, it's, it's sort of, sadly, it has been marked here by the lack of weeds around it because that's how bad the weeds are over here right now. Now this last plant, ooh, this is something. Let's go check it out. Okay, this little gem is called false hydrangea and I had never heard of this plant until I was in a seminar this winter. It was, fortunately, it was an online where I was participating in it online. And it came up, they showed the pictures and before the speaker was even done talking, I had ordered this plant from a nursery called Quacken Grass Nursery, which is actually, um, when I mentioned it, people seem to know about it. I must be late to the party on this. They had really cool plants. This is called Deananth cerulea. We're going to go with that pronunciation. Uh, and this specific cultivar is called Blue Wonder. Uh, cerulea is topped in early July with small terminal clusters of intricate nodding blue flowers composed of a stigma and hundreds of anthers. So very cute. Now let me show you, I've got three of these. Let me show you what they look like when they came. So this is what they look like when they came. Well, actually they looked like this, but with real leaves on them. I put them outside, not outside. I put them in the greenhouse. It got very cold. They came from a warm place. They totally got nipped by frost. Uh, no problem. It's a perennial. We're worried about the roots this year anyway. And if you look carefully here, let's see if you can see this. See, there's little leaves coming from these terminals right here. So that's what I've done. I've just, I'm just going to cut these back to where those leaves are re-sprouting and, uh, and hoping for the best. I think, it'll, I think it'll be fine, by the way. And I'm gonna do this one up here. So that's what I'm doing with all these. Now I have three of these. These are all gonna go right here behind me here. So this is the new path, still being worked on a little bit. And then this is a very sort of nice, I'll show you a picture of this garden last year. It's a really beautiful spot. It's very green. It could use a dose of something that's not just green foliage in here. 
So I think we're gonna work in here. This is an old fire pit that I usually grow caladiums in and I will do that again but I think I'm gonna move it I'm just kind of reworking this area a little bit and I just think like there might be too much stuff in this area so I'm gonna move this to a different part we're gonna grow caladiums in again this year but perhaps this might be a good spot for at least one of these because I'm gonna plant these all in this area um, just probably not necessarily all right next to each other I can move them around later if need be all right so let me get this fire pit out of here fire pit slash caladium pot out of here and then we'll plant. All right, I know I told you I don't normally put stuff in holes, but this hole in particular, uh, it's quite sandy here and I have a little bit of that leftover mix um, which is mostly biochar actually. So I am gonna mix some of that in this hole and around the area because um, I do worry about how thin the soil can be here in some places. Nice roots on this plant. So they sent really nice plants. I was really impressed. There's also new shoots coming up off the side here. So um, this is a nice healthy plant. So you'll notice that there's a lot of leaves here, especially this garden, this woodland area. I don't worry about it. I mean, uh, the plants come up just fine through it. I do scrape off like a big matted leaf area if I need to, but otherwise, um, I just don't, I just don't feel the need. Oh, oh, it's a plant tag. Should we see what used to be here? Hacksaw hosta. Maybe it's still here. We'll find out. There is, I mean, there is a chance I may have to move these when things start coming up more. Um, if we feel like they're going to get crowded out, especially if there's like a big host over here with giant leaves that are going to crowd it out. We will not allow that to happen. So this one in particular has a whole bunch of growth along the side. I kind of suspect that they might grow this from cuttings. Um, I mean, I'm sure they do actually. Um, but you can kind of see the cuttings that were kind of maybe along the side of the pot there. So two important final steps here. One is watering these in, and the next is deer protection. So I will spray all of these. Uh, I don't expect the deer to go after the liatris. Usually they don't go after clematis, at least in my experience, but rabbits do. And I have no idea what they will do with these. So these in particular, I will keep a close eye on. So did I live up to my end of the bargain and show you some plants that you didn't know about today? I hope so. And I hope maybe this encourages you to go plant something different and new that you got to Google on the fly. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with the plants that we see all the time. Those are great plants. There's a reason why everyone plants some of the same plants, right? Because they're great plants. But it is really exciting to plant something that you have to do a little research on and you don't actually know about and you can look for and see how it grows. I mean, there are places, there is room in our gardens for all of these plants. So maybe we should plant more of them. All right, so have a great day in your garden. Go plant something fun and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.